Zell time, Zell time, let's go. Let's get down to business. Let's get down to business. Let's get down to business. I bought a lemon. Today I'm going to show you what a used car dealer pays for a 2015 RX 350 with 47,000 miles on it at a used car dealer auction. So I've walked through this whole auction lot today and I've only found one car that I want to bid on for my business. And that's typically not the case, but recently it's been happening more and more often that we've have less cars that uh, me and Alex, Alex is my mechanic, he buys cars for me too. Um, that we want to buy at an auction and um, we know that auction volumes are down that's that's going to factor into it but the bigger thing I think is that um, people who have the kind of cars that I like to buy I like to buy cars that I can sell for uh, $5,000 and under they're not really trading in their cars because those type of people that have those kind of cars that are driving them every day, these like 2006 Toyota Camrys, 200,000 miles, Nissan Altimas, 2002, 2006, 150,000 miles, 200,000 miles, those kind of people who are driving those kind of vehicles, they don't have the money to be able to upgrade their car. So the kind of tier cars that, that we're buying, they're not showing up at these auctions because they're not trading them into the dealers to be able to upgrade to brand new cars because they just can't afford it. And unfortunately, this is a phenomenon that's only going to get worse in the used car market as long as interest rates stay where they are, as long as prices stay ridiculous. Because as we go forward like this and the economic system gets tighter and tighter and tighter, it actually squeezes those tier of customers more than it does any other tier of the, uh, the, the financial system. But what a lot of people don't realize is that these people are almost some of the most important pieces of the used car market because we need them to trade in their cheap used cars to new car dealers so used car dealers can get them and then we can sell them for we sell them for reasonable prices but other dealers are out there are too there's some going to be out there that that gouge people obviously but if you want to be able to get used car prices to come down you need these people to trade in their used cars because if we don't get this lower end um, used car for a cheaper uh, cheaper price, then people who have to buy cheaper cars, they're actually forced to go into debt. They're forced to make down payments on even higher end cars, pushing that market, meaning that these dealers are gonna be fighting over less and less product. So it just, it just creates this, this massive bubble of, yeah, maybe demands down overall, but the amount of vehicles that are coming back into the system is down even more than what demand is. So you still have these used car dealers that want to stay in business, that are staying in business, and we're fighting over a very limited product. And right now, that limited product, the most limited product right now in the used car market, are these vehicles that I buy, are these vehicles that are under $5,000. They are in short, short supply and everybody wants them because they are trying to pinch pennies. So until you see a lot of these people that have these cheaper cars start trading them in for newer cars, you're not going to see any movement downward on the lower end tier of the used car spectrum. So these cars under $5,000, they can't go down in price until we get more of them and we can't get more of them really until the economy gets better and these people that have these cheaper cars are able to then trade up for brand new cars so we're a long way from that especially if you're looking at these cars that are sub five thousand sub ten thousand dollars you're not going to get any movement um, downward in a meaningful way until we start getting trade-ins from that group of people and for that to happen the economy's got to get better interest rates aren't going down anytime soon so i don't see that anytime soon either all right so i've ignored this truck long enough this is a 2017 f-150 so in uh recent videos at least auction videos i put this truck in there i've been told that it's a canadian truck I actually did my research it is not a canadian truck it came out of california um and then went to north carolina so it has always been in the u.s um one thing it is is it has the lemon law um attached to it is branded lemon um in uh in north carolina and california so that uh, brand follows along with this truck but i looked that up too on carfax and it was branded lemon because the passenger door would not stay shut and that was eighty thousand miles ago and now it's staying shut so uh two weeks ago they tried to get 15 couldn't get it last week 14 and they couldn't get it actually last week 13 and they couldn't get it 
So um, I might try to buy it this week. It's 2017 F-150 XLT, 81,000 miles. So let's we'll see what it brings, and uh, I might raise my hand on this one this week. All right, so I'm sitting in this 2017 F-150 that I've been told by multiple dealers is Canadian, and turns out, I did my research, is not Canadian. It came out of California, came to New York. So why would multiple dealers come up to me and tell me that this truck is Canadian? Well, one dealer probably started the rumor because they wanted to buy the truck and they told everybody. So now everybody thinks this is a Canadian truck and dealers are shady, even to each other. So apparently somebody else wanted to buy this truck so much that they're just going around and lying about this truck, which is very frustrating. Oh yeah, just to finish that thought, so they tried to get uh, 13, 14, 15 grand out of it the last few weeks um, and the seller no sold it. Um, they actually, the seller said last week that they wanted 20 grand for it. So if I can get it for a little bit less than that, then I might actually try to buy it. We'll see. We'll see what happens. All right, here we go. This is one we definitely need to check out. It's a 2015 Lexus RX 350. It's only got 47,000 miles, which is very low miles for the stuff that we usually see at auction. This is nice. I'm surprised that the uh, actual dealership did not keep this for themselves. This is sweet. I might actually check this out for myself. Probably going to be way, way more than what I want to pay for the vehicle, but it's a 2015 Lexus RX 350. It's got 47,000 miles. Super nice. All right, here's a 2011 Ridgeline we can check. It's got 169,000 miles on it. Tires look good. The outside looks good. Inside actually looks very good. Yeah, I don't really like these trucks. I know a lot of people don't even call them trucks, but um, I've heard they're they're really good. But I just I just don't like the look of them. They're a little too. Uh, I don't even know what the word is, but I, I don't like them. <laughs> but it's uh, a lot of people do. It's a 2011 Ridgeline with 169,000 miles. We'll uh, check it out, see what it brings inside. All right, here's another good one for us to check. Um, it's a 2017 Hyundai Elantra. It's got 130,000 miles. Uh, outside looks okay. Inside, it's a little bit dirty. Not too bad, though. Looks good, looks good. All right, so this is a 2017 Hyundai Elantra. It's got 130,000 miles. All right, we don't see a lot of Tundras at these auctions, but here is one. It's a 2014 it's got 141,000 miles. I love Tundras, but I actually don't like the look of this one. I don't like the, the little flares or whatever those are called over the wheel wells. And this one is very, very dirty. Gross. But we'll still see what it brings. It's a 2014 Tundra. It's got 141,000 miles. All right. Tons of people asking about Sienna's. We actually don't see a ton of them uh, pop up, especially these uh, these newer ones. It's a 2014 uh, Sienna with 139,000 miles. Looks great on the outside. Actually looks very good on the inside too. Usually these things are nasty and destroyed on the inside. This one looks like it's been uh, cleaned up, taken care of pretty well. Um, so we'll check, see how much it uh, how much it brings here at the auction. It's 2014 Sienna with 139,000 miles. I bet everyone that uh, is here that doesn't know that I have a YouTube channel, they probably think I'm an idiot walking around talking in this little box here. All right, we don't see very many of these. This is a 2009 LX570. These are cool. Uh, the tires are terrible on this one. Um, outside looks okay. Let's see what the inside looks like. Not bad, a little dirty. Seats aren't wore, uh, aren't wore out too bad. One little rip there. So we'll see what this brings inside. It's a 2009 LX570. It's got 149,000 miles. All right, here's a 2010 Subaru Forester with 126,000 miles. You've been asking me to check more of the mid-tier stuff, so this is it. Looks pretty good on the outside. Stains on the seats. Uh, back seat's good. Looks okay, other than a little bit of staining. It's a 2010 Subaru Forester. It's got 126,000 miles. All right, here's one we can check. It's a 2015 Tahoe. The outside looks absolutely fantastic. Love the color on it. Looks good. It's got the automatic little uh, running boards. Inside looks great. 
a little dirty but not too bad actually the armrest is kind of worn a little bit but overall i think this is probably uh probably eight out of ten um looks great it's a 2015 tahoe 161,000 miles all right i want to check this one because there's a hummer on the auction video i did last week that i thought went pretty cheap but this one has even more miles than that it's got it's a 2009 it's got 197,000 miles and it's a h3 so very similar to the one from last week i want to see what it brings this week because this one it, it looks a little bit cleaner than the one from last week uh, maybe there was something uh, really wrong with uh, that one but we're going to check to see how much this one brings in lane it's a 2009 h3 it's got 197,000 miles all right i know i'll get yelled at if i walk by this and i don't check it um 2017 uh, dodge chargers got 156,000 miles um kind of rough on the inside actually really rough on the inside oh let's see here looks good other than that um outside actually looks pretty good the inside's a little rough but it's a 2017 and it's got 156,000 miles all right done looking at cars so about to head into the auction now Let's get down to business. We got cars rolling through. What is this? The auction's about to go down. Come on, gather around. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Sell time, sell time. Let's go. Thanks, sir. Won't take it for this job. 14 grand, 14 one. 15. I bought a lemon. Well, maybe. They put it on a phone call. So, it's uh, this uh, F-150. Um, I actually was the high bid for um, $15,900. They put it on a phone call. So, um, hopefully they'll sell it to me for that, but I doubt it. Um, honestly, if they come back and say they want like 18 grand i'll probably still pay that um seems to be okay it's got a cylinder eight miss which uh, i can fix with a coil and um, it's got a camshaft timing code which sometimes means the oil just needs to be changed but it can also mean that we need to do some kind of uh, timing reconstruction with the truck but i've already called um, our mechanic that do does that kind of work and it'll be less than a $1,500 fix if we have to go through a whole timing route with it. Uh, so I'm not too worried about that. If I can be in this truck under 20 grand, I think I got a good deal. Um, so there we go, I bought a lemon. All right, this auction's done and it was, it was weird. So um, there were about maybe half the number of dealers that uh, are usually at this auction. Um, stuff still went high, at least the stuff that I watched and, and saw, and the, the really, really cheap stuff uh, went high, but it seems like that mid-tier kind of stuff, like it wasn't even getting bids, it was crazy low, it was getting no sold, everything was being put on a phone call. Um, so, the I mean, the feeling of everything was just completely different than it has been the last few weeks, and I think what's happening is that tax money's already moved through whatever it was going to move through these guys sold whatever they're going to uh, sell and it was probably a lot less than they anticipated they're still loaded up on cars and now they can't really buy a whole lot else um don't get me wrong prices were still were still elevated but i can see a changing of the wind here um, as these other dealers they they get um filled up overexposed and not being able to sell a lot of stuff these used car prices are going to have to start coming down now so um we're probably going to start seeing that in the next few weeks these next few auctions we're going to see a lot of these uh these prices come down as long as there's no more tax money being pushed through the system and as you know i sell a lot of cheap cars and from what we have seen unless there's going to be another big bump it's pretty much dried up so uh what we're doing at my shop we are calling an audible and uh today we are starting to cut our prices from what we have left and we're going to move through the inventory that we have left go ahead and get rid of it because we know 
coming up on the horizon, we're going to be able to buy cheaper. That means we're going to be able to um, sell cars for cheaper, and we don't want to have this new inventory coming in that we can sell cheaper than the inventory we have now, competing with the inventory that is older. So we're going to go ahead and cut our prices now. Um, we're going to get rid of some of the inventory that we have now, and we're going to go ahead and reset. And I hope a lot of the other dealers, if you're listening to me right now, I know I have a lot of dealers that watch. This is what I'm doing. This is what uh, I would say to you to do too, because we know that after tax time moves through, these dealers get overexposed. Prices always come down afterward. It happens every year. I don't care. I know this is a weird year, but it might even be worse this year. And it's going to be really bad for dealers because they're not going to be able to move stuff because they're still stuck in a lot of these cars that they paid way too much for a month, month and a half ago. And now the value of these cars, especially at a wholesale level, is going to be worth, what, half of what it, it had been a month ago. So um, prepare yourself. It's coming. All right. So because I know prices are a little bit elevated, I actually have been dumping my turds at this auction and these guys happened to buy one they told me that they were viewers before oh let me get you in the picture they told me that they were viewers before so i saw them raise their hand i ran over said don't buy it don't buy it don't buy it and they bought a crv for 1500 bucks now i had like three thousand dollars in it so they actually know how to put transmissions in these things so they're going to make money on it but um I, I tried to save them and i even told the uh the auction if they didn't want to buy it they didn't have to but they said they're going to take it anyway so you're going to do good on it all right <laughs> All right, I'll give you another little peek into my business. So I wanted to buy this Kia Forte. It's a 2010, it's got 170,000 miles. Not anything special, but it's pretty clean. It's not bad. Um, and I wanted to pay like around $2,000 for it. We can sell it for 3,500 bucks, no problem. Um, it went wholesale for 3,800 bucks. So um, it's, it's weird, this auction. Some stuff's going ridiculously high, some stuff's going um, low, but that lower end tier of stuff is still bringing so much money because there's, there's not any of it. Um, that tier of customer is not trading in vehicles. So when they, we do see stuff that we can uh, buy to sell for under $5,000, it's just bringing crazy money. That dealer right there, they paid 3,800 bucks. They're gonna pay $300 in auction fees. They're gonna have 4,100 bucks in it. Most dealers aren't like me. They don't just make $1,500,000 on a car. They'll probably try to hit $2,000, $2,500 on it. So on that car that they've got $4,000, $4,100 in, if they don't have to do anything to it, they don't have to fix it, they don't have to have any floor plan fees, anything like that, then they're probably posting it for 6,500 bucks. It's not a $6,500 car. Even if it drops down to $5,500 and they make 1,500 bucks on it like I do, I don't think it's a $5,500 car. I think it's a $3,500 car. So that's what we're dealing with now, is, uh, uh, at least with this cheaper stuff. And um, there's gonna be a lot of guys get hurt. They're gonna get stuck in a lot of this stuff because money is going to dry up a lot quicker than they think, especially this year, we're already seeing it. and. On my lot, we sell $5,000 and under stuff, and we're already seeing money get tight. We saw about two weeks of uh, some good tax money, and now it's slowing down. What if three awesome YouTube car channels, like Car Edge, Lucky Lopez, and Craig from Flying Wheels, and a nobody like me, got together and talked about the, the car market? Hmm. That'd be pretty cool. All right, so before we get into the prices of those cars, I got two updates for you guys. The first one, the F-150, the Canadian truck that wasn't a Canadian truck. Um, so uh, you saw me bid on it in lane. I was the highest bidder. Um, I went up to $15,900 and they put it on a phone call, uh, meaning that they were gonna contact the seller later on and uh, figure out if we could get together on a deal. Um, turns out the seller wanted like $20,000 for it. I even came up, I said, look, you know what? You've run it four weeks in a row. You haven't sold it. No one's been close. Um, I'll give you $18,000 for it. I figured that if I could get into it and still maybe have to work on it and be in it under $20,000, I still got a good deal on it. And uh, they, they called their store that was actually selling it. And they said, you know what? Even at $20,000, we're just losing our butt on this truck. So we just, we can't cut it anymore. What we're gonna do is just, we're going to no sell it and then take it to another auction and then just try it there. So we'll probably never see that truck again. If it is at the same auction again next week, then I'll probably try the same thing again. Um, but I'm not, I'm not gonna pay over 18 grand for it. And next week it's probably not even gonna bring um, what I tried to get it for today, which was um, 15,009. 
All right, and update number two. So you saw towards the end of the auction. Now this, I'm actually recording this a day after the auction. The auction was yesterday. Um, I said that because it felt like the winds were changing, it seemed like there were a lot less dealers, not seemed like there were definitely a lot less dealers at that auction yesterday. And it seems like in this past week, these dealers have not been, prices have still been high, but they have not been fighting over these vehicles like we have been over the last month or so. It just feels a little bit different. So I said we were going to start lowering our prices. We lowered them yesterday afternoon and today seems like the right call because today we sold nine cars. We were slammed today. Um, so that means there's still some money out in the system for us to be that busy even after lowering cars. Um, so I could be wrong about things changing, um, but if I'm wrong and we're lowering prices right now, we're going to move through all our inventory. Worst case scenario, we're just going to leave a little bit of money on the table. But if I'm right that I think prices are going to start going down from here in the used car market on the wholesale side, then um, we'll move through almost all of our inventory and not going to get stuck with anything. Worst, uh, worst case scenario is if we don't lower prices right now, just hold off and see if prices stay elevated then we could get stuck with a lot of these cars that we have now and we could lose a lot of money. All right, prices. 2017 Elantra with 130,000 miles. It sold for $7,200. 2015 RX 350, one that I talked about at the very beginning of the uh, video, 47,000 miles. It sold in lane for $22,600. The 2011 Ridgeline had 169,000 miles. Um, it sold for $8,100. The 2014 Tundra with 141,000 miles, it sold for $17,000. The 2014 Sienna, it had 139,000 miles, it sold for $12,200. The 2009 LX570 um, had 149,000 miles, it brought in lane $18,700 and they acted like that they weren't very close. It was uh, put on an if, it wasn't no sold, so it was put on an if on a phone call. Um, so maybe that deal gets done, but the way that the auctioneer acted in lane, he, he knew what the floor was. Um, it seemed like that one wasn't, wasn't close to getting done. Um, the 2010 Subaru Forester with 126,000 miles, it sold for $5,000. All right, the 2015 Tahoe with 161,000 miles, it sold for $17,000. The uh, 2009 uh, Hummer, the H3, uh, this one was like the one last week, surprised me. It had higher mileage, but this one was a little bit nicer. It had 197,000 miles, um, but it brought $4,500. They didn't sell it. They put it on a phone call. Um, I would imagine that one probably gets done just because of the mileage on it. Um, but it's just surprising. It seemed like uh, that should have went for more than that. Um, I, again, I don't like Hummers. I don't think they're worth what they bring, but I've seen some and I know that they, they bring premium money. So uh, $4,500 seemed cheap for that from a wholesale side, not from a value side, but from a wholesale side, uh, $4,500, that, that, that's probably going to get done. Um, and the 2017 uh, Charger with 156,000 miles, it sold for $12,600. Long enough. Um, in recent episodes, I call them episodes, that's stupid. No, uh, recent uh, videos. Um, that, um, you know what? Check one, two, one, two, one, two. I had to get a bit of here, I had to get a bit of What do you want me to say? Cell time, cell time, let's go. We need to get a bit of here. Let's get down to business. We got cars rolling through. What is this? The auction's about to go down. Come on, gather around. Can't get a witness. So that might have actually been the hardest thing that I've had to film so far. Uh, so uh, like the video just for that, even as horrible as it was, I need a like for that. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. All right, so a little behind the scenes action. We're actually working on some new lighting here and it's a pain in the butt. So I got this, we got all this fancy stuff right here. There's my computer, I'm editing stuff. We got the shelves going and we have these two lights that were supposed to um, be great and eliminate all the shadows. But since I like to wear a hat because I am losing my hair, um, 
there's a shadow. So I had to actually put another light down there and it's right in my eyes too. So we got to figure out a solution for that. Uh, we got some cool new little things came in the mail the other day. I like them. A lot of you have been asking about stuff on the shelves. There is my bourbon fund if anyone wants to contribute. No, I'm sorry. Please, please don't contribute to that. I do not need more money for alcohol. And there's my uh, code reader that I love. I did love and then died. And my cool Ninja Turtle stuff. All right. Thanks, guys, for all the support.